Thank you so much, Sam Stein. Thank you, Gene Cummings. Thank you. Congress is, as we say, deeply divided about another war in the Middle East. We have been at war in that part of the world for the past 13 years. If money and military might could have made a difference, it would have by now. So I asked my colleagues and the president, why do we think that training the rebels would turn out any differently? In West Virginia, we understand the definition of insanity. Senator Joe Manchin, a member of the Armed Services Committee at that hearing yesterday and on the floor today joining me now. Senator, thank you very much. You have raised the alarms. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over again. You know, I just uh, caught part of the president's speech, which I thought was a very dynamic speech again. He's been spot on except for this one thing. When he talks about the uniqueness of our military, we are very unique in our capabilities. What we're not unique in, Andrea, is basically training, arming people in that part of the world and expecting them to work with us and be part of our ally. Uh, that hasn't worked. We've had 13 years of experience, eight years training, arming, feeding, clothing, the Iraqi army of 280,000 persons at the cost of $20 billion. And we see the first challenge they had. They turned uh, turn tailed and ran and left all of their equipment that we supplied and gave those new arms that we gave them to uh, ISIS. Uh, I'm just saying the uniqueness I hope that we have as a negotiating power, as a military, and as a country, the strength of our country, is to get the Saudis involved, get the Turks involved, Egyptians and Jordanians, not just in, not just in rhetoric, not just in promise of we will pay some or we will contribute to this. They should be the ones that are training. They should be the ones that are arming. We should use our unique capabilities to coordinate and help them do that. But if they can't get them to do it, how, what makes you believe that we can? We haven't been able to do that. Well, Senator, that is precisely, I believe, according to my reporting, why General Dempsey said to your committee yesterday yeah. that if the Iraqi army doesn't stand up, if it doesn't work out, he can't rule out recommending to the president that some American ground forces, special forces, perhaps go in with the Iraqi troops or embedded in an attempt, let's say, he used specifically this example, to retake the Mosul Dam. Would that cross the line with you in your opposition to ground well, troops? Well, let's just look at the past experience of 13 years. Do you think our military, our military going over with our weapons has, has in, helped that, that part of the, of the world? Ha, have we liberated that part of the world? Have we made it safer? Uh, if, if it hasn't worked, when I said about people in West Virginia know the definition of insanity, which is basically doing the same thing over, expecting different results. What makes you believe that people that are entrenched, I understand that everyone in, uh, in that part of the world, right in Syria, they're Islamists. They're fighting against the Assad regime. We're going to expect American troops, American uh, expertise to go in there and train them and arm them and ask them now to turn against other Islamists, the ISIS, even as barbaric as they are, to fight them and then turn around and they'll all join forces and fight Assad with us, do you think they're going to take our interest over their own? And none of this makes sense to me, and unless people that live in that region, people that have at stake, I would be very concerned if I was living in Saudi Arabia and I was a Saudi. I would be very concerned if I was in Turkey and I was in Jordan and I was in Egypt. All of the surrounding countries should be concerned. Don't they want to clean up their neighborhood? Don't they want to get moderates back in control, some civility, some sanity to their life? And American troops have not been able to get that for them. We can't do it. Senator, let me play a bit of what the president just said, just to recap and get your response sure. on the other side. But I want to be clear. The American forces that have been deployed to Iraq do not and will not have a combat mission. They will support Iraqi forces on the ground as they fight for their own country against these terrorists. As your Commander-in-Chief, I will not commit you and the rest of our armed forces to fighting another ground war in Iraq. Is that commitment from the President today sufficient to get you to support the money, the, the amendment that's going to be in the continuing resolution for the training of the, of the Syrian forces in Saudi Arabia? First of all, I believe and trust in the President's heart of hearts. That's exactly what he means and what he wants to do. 
I believe also when you heard General Dempsey yesterday say that if I need to, I will recommend troops. So it might be out of our control, the president's control, or anyone else. Once we get our people, Americans, in harm's way, I don't want to, to, to belabor this, but you know, I'm, I'm still, in, in, Andrew. I, I don't know if you're, if you remember the Vietnam War, how it started as an advisory role. Uh, we did not have a military role to be played there. Simply so an you advisory. So you're a no vote, Senator. I'm saying it, but simply, we. I am a no vote, but because I'm giving you reason. I'm giving you history here. I get you know, it. We got we got drawn into Vietnam as an advisory role with South Vietnam. I'm not saying. I'm just saying, just look at our past, look at our history in these regions of the world that don't have the same quality, the same principles, same beliefs that we have. We should respect that. I think he made it very clear. You do harm to America. You plan on doing harm to America. There is no safe haven in the world for you against us. We are unique in that. We can get you. We can stop you from harming America or Americans. What we can't do is change your philosophy, change your religion, your thought process, your commitment to your way of life. You have been entrenched in this for 1,400 years. We're not going to be able to do it in 13 years, almost $2 trillion, almost 7,000 American lives and the blood that's been shed, over 50,000 wounded. Don't you think we should have learned something, Andrew? And if it comes down to it, would you vote against a continuing resolution that's going to fund the government during the recess that's if that amendment is still in there to train? Is it, don't you think that's disingenuine for us to be put in a position of something this serious in the debate that should be had on the floor of Congress, definitely the floor of the Senate, that they're going to roll the two in? I'm understanding the House may get two votes. Do you vote for this or do you vote for the CR? And then they're going to roll them in and give it to the Senate as one, thinking we can expedite it because we have an election coming up and we just definitely can't stay here. So if they're going to say that I'm voting against, and yes, I will vote against the CR, if that's rolled into it without the ability to debate it, and extrapolate it, extrapolate it from that. I'll vote against it, but I'm willing to stay here through the end of September to fix the CR. We need to, and it's ridiculous to have a funding mechanism that we need. It's a shame that we have to completely keep band-aiding and get, kick the can down the road that we couldn't get an authorization and a budget together until we have an authorization of spending to run our country, but we have to rely on the CR. And now they want to throw one of the most important decisions policy-wise that could affect generations to come. Don't you think that that's a little bit asinine? And Senator, before I let you go, football is big in West Virginia. It's big yes, around it the country. How would you rate the way the NFL has handled this? We're about to have this report on the fact that they've now rebenched Adrian Peterson. The whole thing is a debacle. I mean, to watch what went on there and Ray Rice and, and with his wife coming out of the elevator, his fiance at that time, wouldn't you think something happened? Wouldn't you like to say, put a pause on, let's find out if people are conducting themselves in this manner when there's so many young people or so many fans that look up to, I mean, you know, you have a role to play. And basically, you ought to be able to do it. If not, don't be in the profession. So I think that they've got to clean up their act and do it quickly. Thank you very much. Joe Manchin, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks Thank for being you, with Andrew. us today.